Thanks for joining us. I'm Philip Coleman. Lynn Brooks is on assignment. We'll hear from her in just a moment. But first, another round of severe weather hammered residents across West Alabama today. The storms rolled through around 9 o'clock this morning in Tuscaloosa. This home on 27th Avenue sustained severe damage when a tree crashed on the roof. The tree was uprooted by the storm, damaging the roof and siding of the home. Meanwhile, in the community of Holt, another home was hit by a tree, this house on 6th Street. You can see where the tree entered the house. The homeowner says she was not at home when the tree hit. She says she plans to stay at a local hotel. One family's home went up in flames as the storms rolled across Tuscaloosa. Take a look at this. This happened on Northeast Enterprise Avenue around 10 o'clock this morning. That's near the North River Yacht Club. Fire officials tell WVUA the home belongs to Mike Riley from Randall Riley Publishing. A viewer sent us this picture as firefighters battled the fire. Flames shot up from the roof and you could see the fire from a few streets away. Fire Marshal John Brooks says the home sustained extensive damage. Neighbors tell us they saw lightning strike the roof of the home and spark the fire. Officials say no one was home when the fire started. Once they were able to get the fire under control, they moved it started into their salvage and overhaul. And they began working with the uh, homeowner to, uh, to get uh, as much of their personal belongings out, protect them in case the weather continues to be bad. And the cause of the fire is still under investigation. Also today, power was knocked out for a while in the Holt community, sending students in that school zone home early on 6th Street. The wind knocked down several trees in the Holt area, including this huge oak. Residents tell us they believe it may have been around 200 years old. Homeowner John Gray says he's thankful no one was hurt. Gray says no one was home when the tree fell. We got some people that's coming to help us. Uh, in the community, uh, friends of ours that's coming to bring some chainsaws and we're going to try to cut it up and get it out of here. And the scene is similar on Vassy Street. That's where strong winds snapped trees and knocked them over. Lynn Lungsford says her trees were shoved into her neighbor's yard. Lungsford says she was shaken up by the storms. Right now we don't have any power, so we can't, you know, really watch the weather. And we were expecting most of the bad stuff later this afternoon is what, you know, our understanding of it was. So we're hoping this is the worst of it and we'll get a break. Here now is a live look over the city of Tuscaloosa from the WVUA Tower Cam. Are we in store for another round of storms? For the latest now on what you can expect, let's go to Chief Meteorologist Richard Scott. Hello, Richard. Hey, Philip, good Wednesday afternoon to you. Good news is we're in a break right now from the severe weather activities. In fact, we do have some severe weather across state line. In fact, still a tornado warning in place for Lowndes County, Mississippi, close to Columbus. But that storm is weakening as it moves on towards the east. We are all pretty much under severe thunderstorm watch pretty much most of the counties in our viewing area west of Cordova and south of Tuscaloosa. We're under that uh, severe thunderstorm watch till 9 o'clock tonight. We'll be watching the storms close and you know we had that round of storms come in earlier this morning than expected and that stuff kind of weakened throughout the day today which is good news but again more activity developing off towards the west across north Arkansas, south Arkansas, north Mississippi and that's due in here later tonight. So what about the forecast tonight? We're talking mostly cloudy skies, showers of storms still likely. Temperatures hover around that 70 to 72 degree mark through midnight. What about the rest of the forecast? East Easter weekend, you have plans outdoors. It's looking pretty hot. Home team weather is coming up. Stay with us. Thanks, Richard. It's been a year since the worst oil spill in U.S. history. 11 people were killed when BP's oil rig exploded in the Gulf of Mexico. More than 200 million gallons of oil were released into the Gulf after that explosion, forcing the closure of more than one third of the Gulf to fishing. Vigils were held today for the victims of the explosions. Out of the $20 billion set aside by BP to compensate the victims, over $4 billion has been paid out. And Alabama's coast was hit hard by the oil spill in the form of lost tourism dollars. WVUA's Lynn Brooks is in Orange Beach. She joins us now live via the telephone to tell us how the coast looks one year later on this anniversary. Hello, Lynn. Hi there, Philip. It turned out to be a pleasant evening here in Orange Beach, Alabama. And we were 
I just heard you talking about charter fishing. Here in this area on the Alabama coast, it is a key moneymaker for this area, and it's been a long year for fishermen here, but the good news is business is slowly picking back up. This time last year we were here and we spoke with Captain Eddie Sims with Adrenaline Fishing Charter. At that time, his customer numbers were spiraling down and ended up being uh, basically at zero during the summer of 2010. But today, Captain Eddie tells me he is starting to send out groups of about 20 or more people sometimes. That's happening on a fairly regular basis. Spring break, for example, brought uh, lots of bookings his way. Also, his summer charters are starting to roll in. Now, still the numbers not quite what they were pre-oil spill, say the summer of 2009, for example. But Captain Eddie says if this early season is any indication, he does believe he will get back there slowly. After all, uh, captains just like Captain Eddie Sims did expect about a five- to ten-year period before they could ever fish these waters again. So to be back out and running charters just a year later, even though business is slightly slower than what they had seen previous to the oil spill, is still welcome news for them. Uh, since it has been so long, though, since the Gulf waters have been fished, one of the favorite catches, red snapper, uh, is abundant out here in these Gulf waters. And Captain Eddie told me that uh, he and other captains hope that officials lift the restrictions on snapper to avoid that particular fish being overpopulated in these waters. And hopefully, uh, if people can keep more snapper, it'll bring even more folks back down to the Gulf. Live in Orange Beach, I'm Lynn Brooks, WVUA News. Thank you, Lynn. Glad to hear about that optimistic outlook. And WVUA will continue to cover the recovery along the Gulf during this week.